All right, ladies and gentlemen, one of the things you want to keep in mind when you're doing this is your cleat knot. It's the most crucial element as it can be done wrong because many, many people believe that more knots are better. They're not. You do a proper cleat knot because the critical component is making sure you're not taking up valuable space or chafing the line. First and foremost, when you start your cleat knot, you can come to the furthest point away from where you are. In this instance, it's back behind here. Come right around, make another turn, cross over the top, come back. You're gonna make a figure eight, just roll the line over, pull it nice and taut, and you'll notice you have it done correctly when you have two lines here laying parallel with each other and one line right over the top. What this prevents anything from doing is chafing and anything of that nature. Keeps it nice and taut. If in the instance you turn it over and do it backwards, you'll notice it's backwards because it's not very tight, it looks very loose, looks kind of like a weird pretzel. The other thing you don't want to do is make a full turn all the way around and finish it. The reason for this, when it pulls tension, this line goes tight, it pinches this other turn line and secures that causing chafing and rubbing. You don't want that to happen, all right? So the important thing is, come all the way out to the outside, come around, over the top, give yourself a spin, lay it right across, and that's how you should have a proper cleat knot. Looks nice and clean. You have your two here, one over the top. This will help you save a lot of time and a lot of energy and make sure it's done properly. What we've done is we've utilized one single rope because not everybody has multiple ropes at their uh, availability. So what we've done, we started with one, we began at our fire piling down at the end, created our uh, bowling around there, came up to our spring. We came up to our spring, one of the things we've done, we just made a simple loop, take that, pinch it together, come right through here, get them kind of equidistant apart, loop it right over. This will allow you to begin. Now, something to remember while you're doing this, this is not gonna go fast. You're not gonna do this in 15 minutes. This is gonna take some time because there are a lot of adjustments that have to be made throughout the entire procedure. Once we took this line from our spring, our middle of the boat, okay, our midship, came right down, gave it a couple wraps right around this piling. Took it from there, went to the back of the vessel and or the stern of the vessel, ran it to that cleat. We did the cleat knot that I had previously shown you. That secured there. Then we ran it from there over to this piling right here. Came around that piling a few times and went up to our bow. Our bow, I finished up there with a cleat knot as well. Now, a couple things to remember. When you are going to do this, you're gonna utilize your anchors. Most every single vessel that is on the water will have at least one anchor, if not two. Best thing you can do is take your anchor, run up to whatever they estimate your sea height to be, whatever it's supposed to come in at. So say it's supposed to be six feet, you're gonna run up and drop at least that much line. So in this instance, six feet, 10 times, we're gonna drop at least 60 feet of line and anchor and chain into the water. What that's gonna do is it's gonna set in it's gonna allow you to set yourself in the middle of the uh, channel or in the canal in this instance. You're gonna take your stern, run it back, even if you have to paddle out with a little kayak, drop that off and then tie it into the stern. That will allow you to sit right in the middle of your channel, best case scenario. What we have here is it looks like a little spider web. This is gonna allow those lines to flex in and out, but it'll also allow those lines to move up and down and that will be attached on the other side of the canal as well. So it'll be cinched right in. You can begin this side, push your boat out, check and see how far out it is. Make sure you try to help your neighbors because if their vessel is not properly secured, it's just as if you didn't secure your vessel properly. It can move around, it could damage. So be a friendly neighbor, go help them out. Make sure that their vessel is secured properly. You would secure a cross. Most of your neighbors are gonna be perfectly fine with it because they don't want your vessel sitting in their front yard. All right, so it's important to check with them, but also most everybody's good down here in the Keys. Once you look at all your lines, 
double check them. Again, this is not going to go fast. I can't express this enough. Take time. Look over your lines. If you need to go get lines, check them now. Don't wait until days before a hurricane to try to get them because you're not going to. Get some lines now. You should have at least 12 lines, double the length of your vessel at your disposal. Yes, it's a lot of money, but so too is your vessel. 